Hello, I'm Megan Batson, and welcome to my instructional media final project. So, a preview of some of the tools that I use within my lesson sequence include YouTube, Google Docs, Google Slides, Glockster, and Socrative. My learning theory focus, the main learning theory that will be demonstrated throughout the lesson sequence is constructivism or a constructivist approach. Students will be engaging and interacting with material in a way that allows them to make meaning through their own experiences and interactions with the material. Students will be responsible for making connections to material that they can use to create their visual representation of the content. Furthermore, within the share segment of the lesson plan, students will evaluate several of their peers' blogs, leaving comments for praise, growth, and constructive criticisms. By evaluating their peers, students can strengthen mastery of the content by building connections that go farther than just their own constructed knowledge. Collaborating with others by sharing will allow multiple layers of connections to be made within the unit. Some key components of the constructivist theory for learning include motivation is a key to success in learning, learning as an active process, and that learning is constructed through prior experience, cultural beliefs, social interactions, and connections made through the lesson. My instructional design model is the 5E model. Uh, typically, the 5E model is consisting of five key components, such as engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. I'm using a revised version of this model that also adds in student opportunity to share and reflect. The 5E model allows the teacher uh, to provide a lesson using a framework that focuses on the sequence of instruction while also optimizing a student-centered learning environment. The lesson will be written in the following format, engage, explore, explain, elaborate or apply, share or evaluate, and reflect. The objectives. Uh, the objectives for this unit um, are students being able to compare and contrast characteristics of sexual and asexual reproduction. Students will be able to recognize that during both sexual and asexual reproduction, traits are passed on from parent to offspring. Um, sexual reproduction requires two parents, diverse offspring, and has more of an opportunity for organisms to be born better adapted to environmental changes, whereas asexual reproduction is one parent, results in uniform offspring, um, and reproduction is very quick and efficient. The intended audience of this lesson is seventh grade science students, and the lesson time frame is about three to five days. So my Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills for this unit um, are within the organisms and environments section. Student knows that reproduction is a characteristic of living organisms and that the instructions for traits are governed in the genetic material. The student is expected to define heredity as the passage of genetic instructions from one generation to the next, compare the results of uniform or diverse offspring from asexual or sexual reproduction, and recognize that inherited traits of individuals are governed in the genetic material found in the genes within the chromosomes in the nucleus. So my lesson plan, again, is in this modified 5E um, hyperdoc format. And so in my engage section, students are watching a couple of engaging videos. They have a GIF to see, and then they um, are instructed to go to the Socrative room, which allows them to answer um, a very quick poll type question uh, resulting in, you know, very quick feedback and the opportunity for teachers to reflect on whether or not students are understanding the task at hand. They then move into the explore where they start to really get into some more information, uh, but they're, it's not really heavy yet. And so they have a quick site to gain some more information on asexual versus sexual. They have an interactive website that allows them to select organisms um, that they can test their knowledge on. And so they can see, you know, okay, monarch butterfly, mates in the spring, um, chases females to the ground, male attaches to her, transfers a capsule full of sperm. And so they can guess, is that sexual, which I already did and I got it correct. Um, but it will also show them if they get it wrong. And so that's great instantaneous feedback for them as well. Um, and then 
they'd go to this slide deck that would allow them to uh, pick one of the slides and kind of build this whole slide deck as a community. Each student would have their own responsibility and they would be inserting all of the information that they learned about their organism along with the picture. And so then at the end, um, all of the students would have this uh, document and it would be completely filled out. They'd be able to compare and contrast different um, examples of sexual versus asexual reproduction. And so they'd really have a great um, set of foundational knowledge that they could apply to the world around them. And so then we get into our explain section. And so our explain section has a set of slides that are purely informational uh, going into the advantages and disadvantages of, of asexual and sexual reproduction. Uh, there's a video to watch. There's some vocabulary to make sure that we're reinforcing the difference between chromosome and gene and mitosis and meiosis and sexual and asexual, diverse and uniform, things like that. Uh, students then have a task that is completing a T-chart. And so students would have all of these uh, little prompts off to the side and they would be required to sort them based on where they go. Um, very quick and easy, formative way to tell whether or not they truly are understanding the differences between asexual and sexual reproduction. They would submit their document either through Google Classroom or Canvas or whichever LMS that you use. And then we move into this creation piece, this apply. And so students have a glog that they would be creating. And so glogs are really neat because you can add text, you can add video, you can add audio, you can add pictures, you can add like clip art graphics, you can add 3D models where you can actually manipulate and play with and explore um, a variety of different models that they have available. Um, and so it's really great way for students to kind of build this canvas of all of the learning that they've made without the restrictions of being a good artist on paper. Um, then they share, they'd share their link um, to a set of Google, Sli uh, Google Sheets. And so for example, Maria would post her name here. She'd post a link here. And then uh, students after their reviewing would be able to go through and add comments um, to, you know, each of the students that they reviewed. And so they'd really be able to kind of get kind of some instantaneous feedback from some of their peers. Also demonstrating, you know, that the students are looking at other students' works just aside from their own. Then there is a reflection uh, where I used Google Forms. I made a three, two, one reflection. And so it tells them that after they've left feedback on five of their peers on the Google Sheet for them to complete the Google Form, and so the form asks them a couple of questions, such as name three things you learned, two things you want to know more about, one question you still have. And then um, the final piece is this reflection on their blog. And so it's in regards to what are they most proud of? What could they have improved? And so overall, it kind of gets them thinking about everything that they've completed so far within this entire lesson and kind of tying all the pieces back in. And then there's this extend project for some of my more gifted students or my earlier finishers. So YouTube, technology number one. Students will be provided an engaging video from YouTube to activate any prior knowledge and to motivate students to begin thinking about the major topics of study. There will also be some YouTube videos available within the explanation portions of the lesson for student clarity. Two, Google Docs. Docs will be used for the HyperDoc template to be used within the lesson sequence for students. All activities and links will be available through Google Docs. Students will access the link to the Google Doc through the LMS and will begin exploring and interacting through the provided material. Google Slides. Students use the Google Slides in a variety of ways. They use it to complete the T-chart. They use it to complete uh, the interactive exploration site, community slides. They use it to share their creations um, at the end as well as the sheet. Um, and so this would be an additional way that we could use slides. And then the Glogster EDU is my fourth technology tool. Students will be evaluated on their understanding of the topic through the creation of a digital poster. 
um, students and or pairs, if students pair up on the Glog, will be able to share their Glogs within the class slide deck for a virtual gallery walk. And then Socrative, students will submit a check for understanding of the differences and similarities between meiosis and mitosis from the engaged portion of the lesson. Since we'll continue to build on mitosis and meiosis, they explore uh, the different types of reproduction. And so by providing the similarities and differences that the students submit, we'll be able to review them as kind of a warm up for day two. Um, and so it's just, again, a really great tool that students can use because it can be anonymous, it can be by name, and so teachers really get that immediate feedback. Uh, here's a link to my project proposal, and thank you so much for watching.